Hurricane Michael, bigger than Katrina, bigger than Andrew when it made landfall, went in as a Category 4 hurricane and stayed a Category 4 hurricane well inland. Category 3 status through the peninsula of Florida, through the panhandle of Florida rather, and then getting into Category 2 status, heading on up in towards Alabama and Georgia. An epic hurricane. This video right here you see, this is from sunrise this morning to sunset this evening. Absolutely terrifying as this storm moved on through and pressed on in towards uh, the Panama City area and pressed towards the northeast and it's currently getting up through Georgia. It's going to race rapidly, quickly, with heavy rains, damaging winds, all the way through Georgia, getting on up through the Carolinas, and then finally getting off the Virginia coast as we go through the next 24 to 36 hours. You know, the storm continues to track up towards the north. Um, in Georgia, I was talking today to Idaho Marine, one of my sponsors, and they were concerned because Yamaha Motors, where they get their supplies, comes out of Alpharetta, Georgia. So they'll be getting a lot of flooding and some wind damage. The good news there is that most of the heavy stuff will be south of the city of Atlanta. The bad news is that there will be a lot of rain and some power outages, so hopefully it doesn't affect business uh, all that much. All right, you're watching the weather show with meteorologist Vin Crosby covering Hurricane Michael. And so there was a lot of uh, trees uh, reported down. There was even a uh, funnel cloud reported, uh, which sustained winds up around that Panama City area in Pensacola, reporting the rising water earlier in the day. That was around 6.30 earlier this morning. Um, then back here towards Tallahassee, a lot of trees down. That's going to be expected. Hundreds, if not thousands, of trees down in power lines with this. And then back uh, down towards that red dot, there's your water spout just west of Cedar Key. So anytime you get landfalling hurricanes, you get a good chance for a lot of twists and turns in the atmosphere. And tornadoes uh, certainly can happen when they start to make landfall. All right, so the wind speeds uh, peaked right here. Uh, when I went in to look at the Tyndale uh, report, after we took a look at the buoys and then all the storm damage, I went back to look at the Tyndale um, Air, Air Force Base report, and the wind speeds were up around 119 miles per hour uh, in a wind gust, and then it jumped to 129 miles per hour. So there's that report right in through there, the Tyndale Air Force Base, uh, Tyndale Air Force Base, 119 mile per hour gusts, and then that did jump to 129 miles per hour shortly after this as the eye wall moved on through. Um, and then you can see over here to the right, check this out, you can see over there by uh, Lower Grand Lagoon, just up to the west, just south of Panama City, that's where the eye was coming through. And so you could see 16 mile per hour winds and light winds. And then you can see uh, 119 mile per hour wind gust to the right and then 70 mile per hour wind gust to the left. So the eye of the storm very clearly and noticeable uh, right there inside uh, that graphic. So tremendous um, amount of storm damage around the eye wall. And as it pressed towards the north, that's what we uh, continue to see. And then this is something that's pretty remarkable with these, uh, this storm. Earlier today, when we had all that um, information coming in and we could go and track a lot of the storminess and the observations, uh, we get hourly observations and we can track exactly where the storm is and what the wind fields are. So now, look at all these data points. You can see a tremendous amount of data in southern areas of Georgia, Albany, back through Dothan, Alabama, all the way by Tallahassee. Look at them all, all those black dots in there, uh, just around Panama City into the north. And then look at this. This is phenomenal. Now look at this now. The storm system is to the north, and now we have nothing in southern areas of Georgia, all that area. You can see the path or swath of the storm knocking out power and the destruction to the sites as it moved on through Panama City on up into southern areas of Georgia. Uh, all that data being knocked out as that eye was so strong. And look at up there around Albany, uh, Georgia, just down there, uh, the winds getting up to hurricane force and some gusts and tropical storm force and gusts. So just devastating storm as it moves on towards the northeast. And it will continue to track towards the northeast. 
All right, here's the latest forecast track from the computer forecast model that takes it on up to the northeast. You can see it going right through Georgia. Notice all that heavy rain and precipitation, and then it gets into the Carolinas, into North Carolina, and the precipitation is going to dump tremendous amount of rainfall amounts as it continues to track towards the northeast. Look at this. This is the amount of rain coming on through. Again, that orange area, yellow and orange area, looking, looking at 5 to 10 inches of rain, getting up towards 15 inches of rain, going into some areas of Georgia, uh, the Carolinas, back in towards North Carolina. Augusta National uh, Golf Course is going to be devastated, I think, by some of these rains. I think we're going to see a lot of rains going up into North Carolina as well.